Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Forrest. I am one of the adult program coordinators at the Nantucket Athenaeum. And welcome to Yummy Monday. Tonight, uh, so there's a couple of things I'm gonna do tonight. I'm gonna demonstrate two recipes that I really like for Thanksgiving. And um, I'm also gonna give some tips and ideas that I thought of on how to scale down. I know many people are having a smaller Thanksgiving than they normally would. And then um, I'll leave time at the end for questions or comments or ideas. And we're a small group, so feel free to jump in as we go. So I'm gonna, um, so I'm gonna start with the stuffing recipe that I like. I will send you the recipe with all the amounts and everything. And <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with the, the stuffing. I think you can see me. So this is a sweet and savory stuffing. I'm someone that likes to um, get a recipe and then kind of make it my own. So what I have here is I have a skillet um, with probably like a tablespoon or maybe two tablespoons of olive oil in it. So I'm gonna set that at medium heat. And then I have a very small um, onion that I'm gonna chop up. And I had the benefit of when I was a teenager, I worked in a diner and I worked for a catering company um, doing prep work. So I actually learned how to properly chop an onion so you don't cry and it goes really quickly. So what I like to do is I put it down and I cut slices here um, and then you switch it and you cut like this and you come up with these like really nice even um, chunks. I'm gonna do that. And if you like a real hearty stuffing, you can do like it really, really thick. Um, if you want a, something that's not quite as hearty, you could really mince the onions. And then I also have, they're pretty small stocks. So like two to four celery stocks that I'm gonna cut up um, pretty small. I'm gonna cut those in half lengthwise and then chop them. So have one red onion. I'm going to use the whole thing. You could use half if you want. Um, you could also use green pepper or a poblano, whatever pepper you like. That's gonna cook for a bit. And then I'm gonna cook this um, until the onions are soft and translucent. 
And then I'm gonna add the garlic. But you can cover it if you want. I usually just leave it open. Put my garlic. Now I have three large cloves because I really like garlic, but if you're not a fan of garlic, you could use one or um, if you're in a pinch, you could always use garlic salt. I like to chop, chop it myself. I'm going to just leave that and let this cook a little bit longer. So what else I'm gonna I'm gonna add to this is um, some cranberries and apples, so you have your sweet and savory flavors. And I'm also gonna be using um, cornbread and Portuguese bread. I like to mix that. Um, so I'm gonna let that cook for a minute. Uh, Okay, so while that's going, I'm going to get going on cranberry sauce. So I really, um, I love cranberry sauce. I've always loved cranberry sauce. I uh, used to just eat it out of a can. Um, but I finally looked it up one time and I'm like, oh, it's really easy to make. And cranberry sauce, uh, what's interesting about cranberries, they naturally have a lot of pectin in them. So normally if you make like a grape jelly, or um, any kind of, or like a beach plum, people make a lot of beach plum jam out here and you have to add the pectin um, to make it thicker and cranberries actually naturally have their own pectin. So it actually gets thick on its own. You don't have to add anything else. So really quite simple. Um, and the recipe I found online is, it's almost like a Mexican version. I really like a spicy margarita. So this is almost a spicy margarita uh, cranberry sauce. So it's gonna have tequila in it, and a mix of citrus juices um, and some sugar and jalapeno. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna get onto the cranberry sauce. So what I have here is, um, I have one package of cranberries and um, I have a half cup of a mix of citrus. So I did about one lime, one lemon and one orange. Um, so depending on how much juice they have, that be about right. And then I also have some tequila and some water and sugar. So what I'm going to do first is actually rinse the cranberries. I haven't done that yet. I have about um, this size saucepan. You could probably use something a little bit smaller. I don't have anything smaller, so there. And I'm going to add, um, this is three quarters cup of water. How much sugar did you add, Janet? I'm gonna add one cup of sugar. I haven't experimented with, um, maple syrup or brown sugar, you could try that. I don't love a ton of sweet, but um, but I just worry about consistency. So on this one, I do tend to stick with what it calls for in the recipe. Um, you could also try agave and see if that works. Now this is two ounces of tequila. Um, if you were not someone who drinks or whatever, it should burn off, so you shouldn't have to worry about the alcohol in it. But if you're not into tequila, um, 
You can just replace that with water or some of the citrus juice. So I'm going to add the citrus juice. That's what nice is nice about this. It all just goes in the pot. Um, with my sugar. There it is. And I've made this a bunch of times. It is pretty forgiving. I haven't had a situation where it like really came out wrong. And then what I have here is a seeded chopped up jalapeno. Um, and I did actually set aside a couple seeds. So that's where your spices, if you didn't know that in um, jalapenos, it's really not so much the, the vegetable itself, but the seeds. So if you want a little extra spice, you can add just a couple seeds. That'll add an extra pick. Um, and if you're not sure, you could always add more spice later. So if you want to do half a jalapeno, you could try that. So I'm just going to give this a stir. Cranberries are just such like a pretty color. I love cooking with them. And then the green actually adds a nice color to it. So I'm going to put this on the burner. I'm going to turn it up pretty, oops, I lost my spoon. Uh, I'm going to turn it on pretty high. It, you're going to bring it to a boil um, and then you'll turn it down to medium. So I'm going to let that do its thing and just keep a spoon nearby so I can stir it. The other thing you want to be careful with um, jalapenos is when you touch them, you want to make sure you don't touch your face or anything sensitive <laughs> before you uh, wash your hands. See how my I um, was used to using a lot of gas heat, and um, I was used to using stainless steel pans. So recently, I've been using the electric burner and um, cast iron pan. So I'm still kind of getting used to how to manage the heat. So burning me. Um, so I have that cooking, it's all sizzling, and the onions are starting to look a little translucent. So, that looks good. I'm going to add my garlic. I only just, re I cook a lot, and I only just recently figured out from a recipe that adding the garlic later, you don't get that burnt garlic taste. Um, so I've started adding it later, because it really only needs a minute or two before it's now, if I were um, like we're kind of on a time constraint, so I'm speeding this up a little bit. But if I had a lot of time, if I was just home, I'm gonna be cooking all day. I might do this a much more slowly, so everything really caramelized because it'll bring out all the sugar, sugars in the onion and the peppers. Oops. <laughs> Never mind her. Um, okay, so I've done that. Um, let's see what's next. Okay, so I've added those. I'm gonna let that cook. I've turned it down just a little bit. Um, so I have a small apple. You can use any kind you like. I think this is a gala apple. Um, and I have my cranberries that I'm gonna add to it. So I'm gonna chop up the apple. Dogs go berserk if the smoke detector goes off. So every time she senses some steam or smoke, she goes bananas. A little furry smoke detector. You know, a really great apple to use in this might be um, a Granny Smith because they're very crisp and hearty. Um, Macintoshes I found are get very, very soft very, very quickly, but it's stuffing, so it's all going to become mush anyway. Okay. 
add this in. Now, uh, if you haven't cooked cranberries before, you want to be aware they do get hot and then they start to pop. So um, as you're stirring, you'll start to see them go. Um, so watch your eyes. Okay, this is getting a little dry, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water. Another minute, but it's starting to heat up. Um, so a couple while those are cooking. Um, while those are cooking, a couple ideas I've had on scaling things down. Um, if you are just one or two people, I'm just trying to pull up my Word document. There it is. Um, in terms of the stuffing, you could, this recipe is really, there's no eggs and there's nothing that like is hard to break down into pieces. So if you wanted to half this recipe or quarter this recipe, it's pretty easy to do that. Um, like I made corn muffins instead of corn bread. So you could even throw these in the freezer or eat them for breakfast. And then you have like small portions. Um, and I bought rolls. Uh, or if you wanted to make the full recipe, if you think you'll eat it, um, you could always um, like portion out what you think you'll eat that day. And if you won't eat it for another week or a month, you could always stick it all, wrap it and stick it in the freezer and um, bring it out and thaw it and, and bake it and it'll hold up well. Um, and then in terms of cooking, I was looking online and I realized um, that I haven't done this myself, but I, I, in theory, I think it would work well is if you have a muffin tin um, and say you had three people, if you were to do, um, for instance, mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes and um, green bean casserole and the stuffing, those all heat up and cook for about 30 minutes at 350. So if you wanted to put portions of each in muffin tins and throw that in the oven, um, then that would all cook at the same temp. You could cook it all up and then just put it on the plate and you're off and running. So that was an idea I had on scaling it down. Um, or even if you want to do a social distancing thing and you want to portion out, you could give each, each person a muffin tin and they each have their own meal. Stuffing is, of course, the bread. So um, I'm going to cut up. Well, I don't know how much I'll need. I like to do it until it's the consistency I like. But what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what I like. Um, cut this up into like half inch cubes. Probably can do it with your hands if you want it. And I bought these the other day, but. Um, if you wanted to toast them, it'll make it like give you that kind of stale consistency. Um, or if you have bread you're not going to use, uh, it's a little past you can use that. Let's start with that one. Oops, I heard a pop. My cranberry sauce is off and running. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to risk my computer screen and bring you over. 
But if you can see, they're starting to pop. Oh, they look great. Yeah. Wow. So they'll start to um, fizzle and pop, which is great. I can probably turn that heat up. Even though it's Um, so the other thing you want to add to your stuffing, oops, now that they're starting to pop in here, I can hear them as they go. Um, so uh, for spices, I was just recently introduced to fenugreek. Um, it has sort of like a mapley curry flavor to it. I so far added it to oatmeal. That was really good. Um, yeah, it has sort of like a curry lemon maple leaf, or not lemon, lemon maple um, curry smell to it. So it's really nice. So I'm going to add um, maybe like a teaspoon of that. And I also like a bit of nutmeg, maybe like half a teaspoon. I just do a sprinkle. And then I add um, cinnamon. Probably about like a teaspoon. I tend to be a little heavy handed with my spices. So. And then some black pepper. And this is really stuff. Oops, my drum bird's on that. Here we go. Uh, if I had more time, I'd probably set these aside to um, cool a bit longer, but in the interest of time, I'll just go ahead and do that. For a minute or two. Okay. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's getting nice and foamy. Mm -hmm. um, stir. And it's starting, I can already feel as I'm stir stirring it, it's starting to get pretty thick. Turn that heat down. And what's going to happen is it'll get really foamy. And um, and this is the point where you want to turn down the medium or just watch your heat because it's going to start to thicken and now it's really foamy and then all of a sudden it turns to this like really beautiful ruby red color. Um, if you want it really fancy, you might take it off the stove early and strain it, strain all the skins. Like right now I'm kind of pressing the cranberries against the, the side of the pot. Um, kind of mush them up a little bit. But they'll kind of bust open on their own as it gets hotter. You can't smell it. I can smell the jalapeno. Um, yeah. From your house, Lincoln. <laughs> Can't smell it from here. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep one eyeball on that. Um, so here are my veggies. They're still pretty hot, so I'm going to use a spoon. But if it's cooled down, you can actually use your hands to mix it with the bread. Now, this is where um, your own personal taste comes in. So you want to mix it to your kind of preferred bread. So 
So um, I have one of my rolls uh, cut up. So I'm going to add that in. And then I'm going to add two of these corn muffins. And once again, you can use any bread you want. Um, I really like corn muffins. So you could use rye, you could use, um, you know, just simple white bread, you could use a wheat bread, you could use like a herb bread, that'd be really good. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of mixing this in, and it should be, actually, this looks about right. Um, so you kind of want it to be uh, not soaked, but moist, not too dry, because as you bake it, it's going to dry out. Um, if you find that you've added too much bread and it's um, it's like a little too bready, you can always add like vegetable stock um, or even melt some butter that would add some moisture to it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even co like cover it with foil or a cover if you have one. Um, ooh, all right, here we go, here we go. And, and bake it with the cover and that'll keep the moisture in and then like the last like five minutes Take the cover off and it'll bring around the top. Okay, cranberry sauce is almost there. So there it is. And then, like I said before, if there's only have a couple of you and you want to put it into muffin tins and cook it like that, so you can do smaller portions, um, or you could put this whole thing in a like. Um, either a glass dish or a bread pan. And you're gonna bake it at about three, 350 for about, I don't know, like 20, 25 minutes, less if you're doing the smaller portions. Um, and until it's just um, brown on top. And like I said, if it seems like it's getting dried out, you could always add like a little bit of stock. And the good thing about this recipe that I like is this is vegetarian. So I have someone that's gonna be at my table that doesn't eat meat. So what I'll probably do is stuff the turkey because I like that, but then reserve some that I can bake and it's a really nice, satisfying, savory dish that's vegetarian. Okay, so here we go with the cranberry sauce. It's getting there. I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see it. Do you see that? Oh, that looks great. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. So it's really starting. So at this point, I'm because it's an electric burner, I'm actually going to shut it off because it's going to hold a bit longer. I hope I'm not making everyone see it. Yeah, so that's what happens. It'll, it turns fairly quickly. So you're going to want to keep one eye on it. You're not going to want to walk away. Um, and I it turns it, clear. It, it turns like a once it cools, so it's foaming now, so this is about done. Um, I've never ruined it, but I have cooked it long enough that it gets really, really stiff, like really, really gelatinous, so uh, if that's a word. So this I'm going to take off the heat, and what happens is as it cools, so this is pretty um, liquidy. As you can see, it's not very thick, but as it cools, it's going to thicken a lot. Um, so you don't want to cook it until it feels real thick because then it's, I mean, you're, once again, you can still eat it. It's going to be delicious. You're going to have all the flavors, but it's going to be very, very thick. Um, I came in late. What did you put in there? So this is my version of a, kind of a margarita cranberry sauce. <laughs> so I put, um, so it has a lot of citrus. It has orange, um, I lost my spoon. Um, orange juice and lemon and lime. So it's a mix of citrus juice. You could even put pineapple juice. That might be good. But about a half cup of mixed citrus juice and um, a seeded jalapeno. And I used two ounces of tequila, which is a quarter cup and then a half, uh, three quarters cup water. If you didn't want to include the tequila, you could always just add, uh, replace that with water or more citrus juice. Um, yeah. a traditional, like if you were making it for the first time, you wanted to do just a very traditional cranberry sauce, it would be, excuse me, um, a half cup orange juice, one cup water, one cup sugar, and 12 ounces, like that bag of, um, 
of cranberries. And, and you cook it exactly the same way. You put it in the pot, you heat it up, it boils, and you want to just kind of keep an eye on it, stir it, and it turns that bright ruby color, and then mm. you put off the heat and let it cool. And so you had said there was a point where you could strain it. Yeah, so a little bit earlier in, as soon as, soon as you feel all the cranberries are really starting to, you know, I probably could still, I haven't, I've never done it, you probably could still now while it's hot is send it through a fine strainer. I hate cleaning the strainer. I love cooking. I'm just kind of a lazy cook. But if you um, had a mesh strainer, so if you had something like this, you could send it through this and then you would get a very, you would have all the flavor, but you would have similar to like the jelly that you get, like the ocean spray cran cranberry that comes in the can. In a can, yeah. Yeah, something similar to that. It'd probably be a little bit thicker because it's homemade, but um, but it, it wouldn't have any, it wouldn't, it would be much smoother. Um, so I've always just made it this way. Once again, I don't like cleaning the strainer, um, but that's how you could do it. And yeah, even now it's still liquidy, but you'll see it's gonna, because we're talking, it's gonna start to thicken up. And what I really like, well, I mean, I just love cranberry sauce, but what's great about this is you can, if you wanted like half the recipe or quarter the recipe and make less, it doesn't need that, like that much, but um, it'll keep forever. I mean, you could keep it in the refrigerator for a month easy because it has all that sugar in it, which preserves it. And then I like it, um, what I did with it is I would make toast, like a baguette or something and put some goat cheese on there with the cranberry mm -hmm. sauce, it's really good. Or this has the spice in it. So even a breakfast sandwich with some like egg and cheese. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really into sweet and savory. So I like like really salty, salty food and then a mix of like something really sweet. So I'll make like grilled cheese with sharp, sharp cheddar and apple. Um, so I like those flavor combinations. And yeah, and then the stuffing. This looks about right. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm actually not going to bake it um, because I'm actually going to use this on Thanksgiving, but I'll either put it in the fridge. I might put it in the freezer. I'll probably put it in the fridge because it's only a couple days. And both these, they don't have the stuffing, especially it doesn't have any meat in it. So it's going to last a little bit longer. Once you start adding chicken stock or anything meat based, you're a little bit on a time crunch to make sure you eat it or freeze it. Um, whereas this is all vegetarian, so you're good to go. Where did you buy the cra the um, corn muffins? The corn muffins? I actually just bought it, uh, the box, um, Jiffy at Stop and Chop. So this is just what I get. It's, this is like the easiest, I made it earlier today, it's so easy. You need um, a third cup of milk and one egg. Um, so I just made my own, but you could probably, Actually, like a stop and shop or a bakery, if you've got like day old, that'd be even better because it has like a little staleness to it. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, I'm going to make those two dishes for Thanksgiving. That's why I signed up tonight. I'm, oh, I, nice. Yeah. And I'm going to send you, I have the recipes here and actually I'll pull them up and we could look at them real quick. So that's the, the stuffing. You don't use rosemary or thyme or sage or anything like that. You can do all this. This is a very, like, this is how I make it, but rosemary would be great. Sage would be great. Um, you could add all kinds of spices to it. So those spices along with your spices, would that be too much? I don't think so. I mean, you could always try it. Like you could always add a little and taste it. Right, right. Um, but... No, I think rose, rosemary, I think would go really well. Thyme would go really well. Um, I would maybe, if I were going to do that, I would maybe go a little lighter on the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Okay. Um, but it, it's all to your personal taste. Right. Like I really, I know someone that's um, going to be at my table that doesn't like mushrooms. So I didn't include mushrooms, but I maybe would have otherwise. Right. Um, let's see. I'm looking for my... Oops, here we go. I think this is it. There it is. The liquid you put in it what was what? There's in the stuffing? Yes. 
I didn't really add, it didn't really need a whole lot of liquid. What I did is I sauteed the vegetables. Right. Onion. In olive oil? Yeah, and I used olive oil. So if you wanted to add more moisture, like in a day in the fridge, this might be a little dry. So I might add a little vegetable stock or I might just melt some butter um, and that'll add moisture to it. You can even add like a little bit of water. That would be cool. Um, butter would be delicious. <laughs> I like with Julia Child, more butter, the better. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, someone asked how much sugar. Um, it's one cup of sugar. So I'm actually gonna pull up the recipe now so I can go over it with everyone. And and I will email this to everyone oh. on the list. Oh, okay. So the spicy cranberry sauce, I used a quarter cup tequila. Once again, you can replace it with water, orange juice, or more citrus juice. I used one eighth cup lime, one eighth cup lemon, and a quarter cup orange. I just went a little light on the lemon and lime. They can be so tart and the cranberries are already so tart. Yeah. Um, you might break your face eating it. Yeah, um, and do you squeeze these juices or? I, you don't have to. You could buy the orange juice or um, I squeeze them because it's not, if yeah, I- Yeah, it's not very much. It's not very much. If it was like two or three cups, I, yeah, I might be inclined to buy it, but um, this was, I mean, when I was measuring it out tonight, it was like, ended up being one lime, one lemon, and one orange, and I still had some left over. So uh, it's not that laborious if you wanted the fresh juice. And I think it always, especially where it's such a small amount, it makes a big deal, a big, big difference on the flavor, I think. And lots of times when you buy, if you're not looking at the label, it might have a lot of sugar already in it. So I just like squeezing it because I know exactly what it is. Um, three quarters cup of water, uh, 12 ounces of cranberries, which is the standard, like when you see that bag of cranberries, that's 12 ounces. And then I bought a small jalapeno and I seeded it and minced it. So seeding it's really important. That's where the spices are. But if you want a little extra spice, save like three or four seeds and dump that in. And one cup of sugar. And then the directions are on the you're here. You put it in the saucepan, bring it to a boil. And it, you just want to, you do want to watch it because it'll start to foam if you've ever boiled or like heated milk and it like poof, boils over. Um, so you do want to watch it because it'll start to foam and boil over. And then just reduce the heat a little bit and you'll hear the cranberries starting to pop. You want to, you don't have to stir it constantly, but it will start to stick. So you want to um, stir it uh, frequently. And then lower the heat if needed and then um, cook it and you'll know when it's happening just the foam starts to disappear and that turns that dark dark ruby color wow. and then but you want it still nice because this is probably like i can see this is already thickening and you can always boil it again like if you uh put it in the fridge the next day it's so liquid like still a little too liquidy you could always heat it up again and boil off a little more uh water or liquid um, so that's a cranberry sauce. And as I said, this will keep a while. So you could always put it into little jars and give it to people or, um, just stick it in a jar and put it in the fridge. It'll last quite a while. I've never frozen it. You could try it. Um, but it'll last quite a while. And then here's my recipe for the sweet and savory stuffing. This is what I've done, but you can do variations everywhere. So cornbread crumbled Portuguese diced. And then I used two stalks of celery, one small onion, red pepper, three cloves of garlic. Um, you could go heavier or lighter depending on your taste for garlic. I love garlic, I'd eat a clove um, whole. One small apple. I would actually, I use Gala. I would recommend Granny Smith. I think it holds up better in the recipe. Um, cranberries, I used uh, three quarters of a cup. So you could just sprinkle it around until there's a nice like sprinkling and a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, half teaspoon of fenugreek, salt and pepper to taste, and um, the two tablespoons of olive oil. You could use any oil. Um, I used olive oil. You could even use butter there if you wanted. And then I added at the bottom stock or butter if you need it. You want it to be a little bit more moist. And the directions are down here. So you're gonna, the, you'll have to pre-bake the cornbread and Portuguese bread. Uh, saute the vegetables over medium heat. 
and then add the garlic, apple, cranberries, and spices. And then I just wait until the cranberries are popping and everything seems like it's really starting to gel and cook and it's soft. Um, and then tonight I kind of rushed through it, but you could set it aside for 20 minutes. It'll just make it easier. You could work with your hands if you want and really, really mix it up. Uh, right. And then add it all into a mixing bowl. You're going to add the diced bread and, and cornbread. So I didn't put amounts, but in this recipe that I did, I did, um, two corn muffins and one roll, and that seemed about right. Uh, you could do more or less. And let's see. Do, 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 do. And, and like I said, it should be moist, not soaked. And then if you feel like it's too dry, you could always add stock or butter. And then um, transfer it to a baking dish or a bread pan and bake at 350. Mm. The stuffing looks delicious. <laughs> it smells great. <laughs> We'll have to add that feature to Zoom. Um, the fenugreek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fenugreek. We just did that for a spice challenge. So I hadn't really even heard of it before, but um, I'm enjoying it. I've used it uh, in a few things now. So that's that. Any thoughts? Any questions? You know, you said you were going to stuff your turkey and I like it stuffed as well. But I usually put grease proof and um, grease proof paper in for us and then put the stuffing on it. Do you use anything like that or? You know, it's been a while since I did a turkey, but I've never put paper in. I've always just put it right in. I do know you want to be make sure that um, you leave space. So it seems like you, you never want to stuff it to the brim. You want to actually leave like an inch or like an inch. Okay. Because yeah. it's going to expand as more moisture, especially in a turkey, all that moisture comes out and it'll steam and expand. Yeah. I love the stuffing from a turkey. Me too. Me too. So I'll probably, there's probably plenty to put. Um, I mean, it depends on how big your bird is, but I think I've done like maybe a cup or like three, but you don't need much in there. Right. And it'll really expand. And then the rest I'll just cook on the side. Right. Um, another thought I had with this, like if you were going to do like a post Thanksgiving brunch is you could smush it up real tight and um, dip it in egg and like fry it in a pan. <laughs> Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Or even like put it in the pan and add a bunch of egg and it would be like a, a quiche or a, um, like a bread pudding. French oh. toast. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. You always have to think of the leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm very excited to try these. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. This was very helpful and the recipes look delicious. Good, good. I'm excited. Yeah, I love sharing recipes and um, experimenting and trying new flavors. So, yeah. good. All right. Well, with that, I will wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving and good luck with your cooking and stay healthy. And Thank you. You too. Yeah. Thank you so much. And when will we expect the recipes? Um, I'll email them right after this. Oh, okay. Great. You'll have the recipes. I don't know when the recording will be up, but you'll have the recipes right away. Excellent. Thank yeah, you so much. An email. Um, I'll put my email in the chat here real quick. Oops. One. Uh, there it is. So it's jforest.nantucket uh, so If you have any specific questions. Oh, and you'll get my email when I email them. Uh, recipe. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thank so you. welcome. Nice Thank you, you Janet. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Good night. Good night.